Welcome back to another hacking tutorial from Stealth Data Zero. Sorry if my voice sounds a little weird. I'm feeling a little under the weather, and that's why I haven't been posting. Um, today we're going to be talking about two exploits. I'm going to be demonstrating one, but I'm going to show you how to use the other. They're both very easy to use. They only need an R host, in other words, an IP address to attack the target. Um, exploits are very dangerous because they don't need any kind of social engineering or downloading. Um, in most cases, they're just point, click, fire, you're in full control. Um, these exploits affect Windows XP and Windows 7 and Windows Server 2008. Well, you might be asking, well, why these um, older systems? Well, in the wild, you're going to find some Windows 7 uh, fans still using Windows 7, and you're going to find some Windows XP fans still using Windows XP. But what the real risk is, is companies. In fact, I know a manager at JCPenney's that told me that their whole system is running Windows XP. That means that you could simply generate a binary payload on Metasploit, and disguise it, send it to them in an email, and literally hack JC Pennies. And there's millions of other companies like this using Windows XP and Windows 7. Um, it just costs too much money to upgrade, and they have so many computers, and when they do upgrade, some computers get left behind, so there's always flaws, and that's why these kind of exploits are good to know especially if you want to get into a pen testing type of field now if you want to start Metasploit you can just click this uh, Metasploit icon over here I like to do things in my terminal so uh, I'm gonna hit control shift T to split my terminal in half and you should always hit service Post GraphQ. Oops. GraphQL start. When you're running Metasploit, it helps Metasploit run faster. It's a Metasploit dependency. And then I like to start things with my uh, terminal. If you want to be fancy, you can run it as suit or as uh, root. So you can hit sudo msf console. And then hit enter and it will start or you can just type in msf console and hit enter and that will also start metasploit they have metasploit opened over here now to find the eternal blue exploit which affects uh windows 7 and windows server 2008 you would just type search eternal And hit enter like so. Um, if you wanted to search other kind of exploits, you could just type search Windows exploits or search Linux exploits or search browser exploits, and it'll bring up the list of exploits. Once Metasploits loads, it'll show you what um, version you're running and all the different. Uh, amounts of exploits and payloads encoders and knobs it has so that's how you search for exploits um, I'm trying to get you a little bit more familiar with the uh, uh, commands of Metasploit so here's the exploit we're going to be using to hack the Windows XP machine And as you can see, it's broken down, it's exploit, it's for Windows, it's attacking the SMB server protocol. MS, the 08 stands for what year it's found. So whenever you see this number here, that's the year the exploit was found. 
Okay, so this um, exploit is very easy to launch, so is Eternal Blue. Like I said, all it needs is a R host, in other words, a, an IP address to be fired at. So we'd all we'd have to do is hit, simply type set R host. And normally you'd have to do um, an nmap scan to, to determine uh, the IP address of the target computer on the network. Um, we're cheating and we already know the uh, we already know the target IP address of the computer we want to attack but normally again you would do an um, nmap scan or uh, some kind of other IP grabbing technique to get the IP address of the target computer. But before we get the R host, I just want to show you you can hit show options and this will show you all the options needed to launch the exploit. So let's say you uh, had a um, used nmap and you found a um, device you want to try to exploit. You could search for exploits how I showed you. And then you can hit show options to see what um, options you need to set. This one's pre-set for 445 for support because of the type of exploit it is. And you can see the only thing that it needs is an R host, which is um, the target IP address. You can also hit show targets. And I will show you all the targets of that um, particular exploit that you have loaded. Now we're going to set the R host. Again, the show option and show targets is just uh, optional. If you need to get some more information to make sure you launch the payload correctly, um, that's how you do it. Or if you're lost and need help. And then all you need to do is type exploit to launch the exploit and let it do it, let it do its thing. You can see it's detecting the target automatically, starting a reverse handler, sending it stage, and now I have my interpreter shell. I like to type sys info as soon as I get it just to make sure everything's running good. And you can see that I attacked the Windows XP machine. Um, you can drop into a shell, which is the CMD shell. This is issuing commands on the actual computer. You can hit DIR, list the context, contents of the directory. You can switch directories, list all the files. Um, you basically have full control of the computer at this point. You can type help and get um, a command list, hash dump, so you can get um, all the contents of the SAM database and use a hash cracker and then crack the hashes. Get system is one of the first things you should probably want to do to try to elevate your privileges if you're not running as admin or system. Um, you can start a keylogger. Uh, get privileges. Uh, clear EV is something you should do when you're leaving. That's clearing the event log to clear your tracks. ARP, you can get the uh, display the the ARP cache, which is all the fi uh, or all the IP addresses that the computer may have connected to on that network, so you can get a better layout of the network. Here, and choose basic commands here, and from here you literally can do 
anything. Um, you can take screenshots. We'll take a screenshot. Um, you can run persistence where uh, as soon as the person logs on, it will send you another signal. That way you can keep access forever. Um, you can do run M E T S V C and that will install a backdoor that you can um, simply use your multi-handler to connect to any time. Um, like I said, you can have it where when the user logs on, um, it will send out a signal and you can use your multi-handler to catch that. So once you're in, uh, you can keep access forever. And that's why exploits are so dangerous because um, this person wouldn't know that they got hacked because they didn't download anything. They didn't do anything. They didn't go to any malicious websites. They just had a vulnerable computer and um, vulnerabilities can come in softwares, things that we install on our computer. Like the computer itself may be fine, but we might install a vulnerable piece of software that allows a hacker to do something similar to this and gain control of our computer. As you can see, I can take screenshots. I'm just going to do one more thing. Run VNC. And uh, you can actually control the computer this way. It's kind of like a team viewer version of looking at the computer. Um, you can just watch the computer in real time. I just want to read iterate the persistence thing like once you're in it's not a one-time deal you, you could you can keep yourself in especially if you're using an exploit because you can probably use the exploit to get back in but just in case if you can't you can set up a back door um, so you can get back in anyways And that's why I said these things are very, very dangerous. Most companies are using Windows XP. Like I said, I know someone in management at um, a retail store, they're running Windows XP. Uh, I know a couple other places, um, like a restoration uh, company, a very reputable one that is running Windows 7, which is vulnerable to Eternal Blue. Um, here you can see uh, a live stream of the screen you can see the mouse moving around um, it's not very much lag here uh, so you can literally just spy on it and if you set up the VNC payload right you can actually control it um, from your end as well so that's how you have complete control over a uh, Windows XP machine with just an IP address, again, you can do this with Eternal Blue on um, a Windows 7 machine, and you can do it on uh, a couple other machines um, using other types of exploits, any exploits that Metasploit offers. And as you can see, um, if we scroll back up to the top real quick, there is uh, quite a lot. Uh, 1700 of them so there you have it uh, I showed you a little bit how to use navigate Metasploit I um, hope you found the video informative if you did please drop a like um, if you have any questions uh, ask them in the comments I will answer each and every question as always stay safe have fun and keep hacking